Hey everybody, it's Stephanie, and I got a little bit of a treat for you today. Um, hi, so hello everybody. I'm gonna wait a couple of minutes until I've got some viewers. You know, the, the odd part about this is, is it doesn't give you your um, timer. So I'm assuming it's real, real close to four. Uh, eight people hello say hello when you get a chance so that i know i'm not in this alone as you can see it's kind of a little bit uh creepy hi lori a little creepy and a little overcast today but uh <laughs> i was inspired by this morning's uh photo post that maria um posted on the museum site part some of our um some of our goodies on the seventh floor. So being in the building today, I thought you might kind of like to take a look at a few of those things. See, okay, 41 people. I don't know what time it is, but I'm gonna get started here. So, hello, Andrew. Um, all right, so seventh floor. We have a couple of floors in the museum uh, that hold some of the treasures, uh, the materials that we build with. Um, well, I guess let me start this out correctly. Hello, Bobby. All right, my name's Stephanie Von Dresik. I am the uh, retail director and historian by virtue of tenacity. I've been here a really long time here at City Museum. Um, my colleague and I, Maria Cassily, she is the tours manager and chief archivist for the museum, so we kind of work hand in hand. Um, we're also very good friends, but that's just a bonus. We were friends before we. Well, anyway, uh, we, we um, have this segment um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday um, called Musings. We just kind of talk about things related to the museum, related to St. Louis, whatever. Anyway, so this morning, Maria posted a picture of the seventh floor, part of the seventh floor, which is where we keep a lot of the building materials that we that our artists use in creating the museum. And everybody always wants to see the behind the scenes. Well, we have talked about doing tours on this floor before and you can kind of get an idea of why we cannot. There, it's, there's no lights, it's very dark. Um, so even with flashlight tours, it still can be hazardous for sure if you don't know where you're going. Um, I have a fairly good idea of where I'm going. I also look down a lot, so I'm gonna flip this around as soon as I start walking. Um, but yeah, I kind of feel like I'm wearing the red shirt on, tar on uh, Star Trek, right? So anyway, um, without further ado, ado, let's get started. Maria, are you out there? Nancy, are you out there? Show yourselves. These are my colleagues and cohorts. All right, so I'm gonna flip this around and um, let's start looking at some stuff. Yeah, so as you can see, it's dark, but there's all kinds of goodies up here. Crunch. So as I said, we have a couple of floors where we keep a lot of things. Um, this floor houses a lot of uh, our architectural elements that our artists build with. And sometimes you'll find them sort of recreated here on the floor in ways that they might be used. And this one, I think I might have a picture of it somewhere. You know, really can't see this, darn it. Um, this is a real pretty polychrome terracotta um, uh, here, cap, no, I don't know. Anyway, um, here's another. This, I believe, and again, I have to go back to the original pictures, but this, I believe, is part of a facade that is being um, repurposed in the architecture museum downstairs as part of a doorway. Pretty piece, but you can see these are all separate pieces, and this particular one has been assembled in, in a way that it might be used again somewhere in the museum. Of course, someplace this old, gonna have messages. I was here, but no more, says JW. Not exactly poetic, but there it is. Um, 
Okay, and we do have windows, <laughs> so we can see things a little bit better. Let's see, some more various pieces and pallets and bits and trash. I'm going to come over here. You know, there are pieces that if you look closely, you might recognize them as being having been used um, elsewhere in the museum. This particular, whoops, sorry. This particular uh, baluster, there is a section of it on the um, fourth floor that has um, been refurbished and is a, a beautiful sort of gilded um, gold. <laughs> anyway, it's really nice. So here is, except that I cannot turn my phone sideways, but here is the view that you saw if you saw our Facebook post this morning except that it was horizontal and I can't rotate my phone. But so this is a big chunk of some of the architectural things that we build with. Whoops, there went my battery. Um, here, you may recognize, if you've seen the, um, if you've seen the, uh, stock exchange cornice on the fourth floor in the Sullivan Gallery. This is this was a post article, obviously. This is and this is a great picture. I wish I could get a little bit better. This is um, Polly who re putting it back together. This is Kurt and Bobby. They did have to sculpt a couple of pieces to fit in um, because, as you can see. We have lots and lots of pieces of things. And especially when it has to, when they're trying to reconstruct it as they did with the, um, with the cornice, you know, that, that requires some real skill because that would have not necessarily been numbered when it was taken down. A lot of pieces, in, if they are, uh, recon, if they're, um, taking something down and know, that, and know that at some point it will be reconstructed. It's carefully numbered and lettered and whatnot so that it can be put back together. However, when you have just lots and lots of pieces like this, that was really quite a feat. Hi, Donna. Hi, Nate. That was really quite a feat for them to reconstruct or construct the facade as they did, um, a piece of the facade on the fourth floor. And that is, um, I say, and that, that was really quite a feat. Okay, so miles and miles of goodies to work with. One of the things that we have a lot of are pieces from the uh, Hammond, Indiana schools. I'm gonna give you a, uh, the Hammond, Indiana schools, um, pretty, you know, pretty forward thinking. They had um, Almsley and Sullivan uh, design and create um, public schools, three of them uh, for the town of the city of Hammond, Indiana. Um, there are there are three distinct schools, three different schools: um, Washington Irving, Oliver Morton, and Thomas A. Edison schools. Every one of those schools had a had a um, harmonious but completely different um, style or set of 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 uh, decorative elements, and and a different color of terracotta as well for each one. So, I'm gonna come back around. So, they're highly or ornamented um, buildings. So there is, you know, we say, why is there so much of it? Well, because there was a whole lot of trim on these buildings. Gorgeous buildings, um, the likes of which you wouldn't see now. And you have to, you know, I, it always amazes me when I think about all of these pieces were 
sculpted and modeled from flat drawings. In fact, there's a really useful book that is now out of print. Um, it's architect, it's a, it was a catalog for um, uh, an exhibit, Architectural Ornament in the Hammond Schools, and it shows, well, it shows the kind of drawings and whatnot they had to work from. This is not why you were here, though. You weren't here for a history lesson. You're here to see what we have to build with. So sometimes they have pictures of the original pieces, how it was originally put together. And this is the sort of things, this like Xeroxed sort of faded picture, the sort of things that our artists had to work with when they were, when they were putting together, piecing together the cornice. Okay, this is a nice one. Everybody likes this. This is a uh, plaster and horsehair, um, fabulous ornament from a theater which escapes me, the name of which escapes me at the moment. Okay. Anybody have questions? Hi, Alex. We love this museum too. Glad to hear it. Um, these, a lot of these pieces here are from the um, Carson Peary Scott building um, in, uh, in Chicago. Part of, uh oh repurposed as the uh, as a Sullivan Center. Um, there are, as you can see, you know, we end up a lot of times with a lot of broken pieces and that makes them easier to repurpose and sell. Sometimes we do sell some of these pieces. We do usually make sure, oh, there are lights at the other end, Scott, just not at this end, um, the other end of the, of the floor. Anyway, we do try to keep, if we have a nice solid run of something, we do try to keep that together and use it, you know, uh, in, in a way that preserves the integrity of the, of the pieces. Um, this is kind of the, see, so there's all kinds of little bits and pieces. This is sort of the suffering people section. This is another one. This is kind of this is kind of one of my favorites. This is, if you can see her. This is this is um, progress lighting the way for commerce. I believe is what she is called, um, and her informal name is the Spirit of Progress. She was this symbol for Montgomery Ward. Hi, Tim. Um, she was a symbol for Montgomery Ward. Um, she, ah, thanks, Donna. Um, she was featured in hundreds of Montgomery Ward stores across the United States in some form or another. Um, this poor girl has, has, has kind of I wouldn't exactly say been through the ringer, but she is not complete. Um, she does have some broken pieces. There's a foot up here. We do have a complete one constructed in the museum. Um, she, that she is featured on the fourth floor, if you've seen her. Um, anyway, yeah, moving on. I'm leaving things around, laying around like I'm not going to be able to come back and pick them up. I'm the only one on this floor right now. So... Anyway, oh, I know why, though. I was carrying that around. So anyway, lots and lots of goodies on this floor. Um, this is something that I just kind of find interesting. I always like to, to see, well, anyway, all kinds of stuff. So talking about the, getting back to the Hammond schools, the Hammond, Indiana schools, there were three of them. They were huge. One of them did have a, an addition that had some um, terracotta that was added to it that was in the style of a, 
uh, Elmsley and Sullivan's work, but it was not quite the same. So it's kind of a an interest. It's kind of an interesting thing. You can pick it out. Um, but here's kind of what I wanted to show you is why there is so much of this because there are so many different designs. Here is a particular uh, piece, and it's it's red terracotta, so we know that that's from Morton School. Hi, Tricia. Hi, Kristen. Um, Here's another couple of pieces from, from Morton. And this one, because it is in the catalog, we know that it is one of the main cornice panels from Morton School. So anyway, when they decided to, um, to tear these schools down and I suppose make way for new ones or something, they, they did have the foresight um, to save these pieces um most of the main pieces the the like almost these big termination pieces um big huge decorative items and whatnot most of those are on display in places um but the rest of this so it's kind of you know which is gorgeous in and of its own but there was a lot of it so a lot of this, I don't know how well you can see. No, you can't. Um, a lot of this has ended up in basically three or four places. A lot of it's just sort of laid around in a boneyard. This is a different school, but you get the idea um, of the scope of this decorative um, ornament. Anyway, a lot of it ended up in some boneyards and... Um, Fortunately, most of it has ended up in the, in the hands of three or four um, dealers, collectors that appreciate it. And we have ended up with a, a, a lot of it was here with City Museum. And we do use it. We do have some of it still, on this, still um, featured in the Architecture Museum on the third floor. Um, we are using some of it in the uh, new maze on the fourth floor that I think I posted on Instagram, Artifacts Instagram last week. Um, but, you know, all this, all this kind of stuff, there's, there's just a lot of it. So it's really neat. It's really neat to have and really neat to be able to use. And again, we do sell pieces of it as well. So if you'd like a, a piece for your own, come see me. It's at Artifacts. Anyway, so look, you just never know what you're going to find on 7. This appears to be all flooring, all kinds of flooring from somewhere. Some things are maybe not so fascinating. That's a bunch of buckets and mops. Um, hi, Lila. Thanks, Bobby. I appreciate that. And, you know, this is but a small portion of the seventh floor. Some things fascinating, some not so much. Um, I can't show you everything because if I did, I'd have to kill you, right? Um, <laughs> anyway, but you just never know what you're going to find. Maybe a new exhibit someday, maybe a new ride. Look at this guy, cool, huh? All right, well, I think without walking through more things, I think that's what I got for you today. Again, you just never know what you're going to find on 7. And oh, that's a niche. You never know what you're going to find on 7. Lots of old doors from old schools and things like that. That's an old world aquarium poster. You know, it's just kind of a treasure trove of things to work with when you can see them. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today. I appreciate it. Um, again, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Come on back on uh, Wednesday and Friday. Look at the rest of the CM On Air um, shows because there's always something to be had. We appreciate you stopping by. We can't wait to see you again. Bye, all.